things were said to you beforehand. That's not bragging. I know how to brag. This is not bragging. It's to make you understand that these things were shared to you and with you real time in a capacity that can't be faked. So the market ran up in here, took out the high, broke, lower, traded higher, inefficiency, bearish order block right there. Price breaks. We want to see what? We want to see proof that it wants to go lower. What would that look like? A breakaway gap right there. Did that fill in? Did this fill in? Did it even reprice to it? No. So this is a good signature to have to anticipate that we're really strongly in contention to run these lows out here. And we did so. Come back up, trade into this low. Why does this low for the classic support resistance, guys? Because now you're thinking, oh, well, he's making this complicated because all I would do is sell short here. Okay, show me you entered short there. If you know that this is how it works, for the folks that come to me in my comment section and saying it's this and it's that, show me your trade entry on that stuff. You only talk about it after it happens. I'm talking about before it happens. And then I'm trading with real money on it. Hello. Why is this low now supposedly a uh, support after support broken now becomes resistance? That's the theory, right? That's what everybody learns in the books. Why did it work right here? Why did that happen? It has nothing to do with this low. What's over here? Study that. <laughs> Everything in here gives you this and that. Price runs down, falls short of what? The inbounds on the weekly chart that you can't see here. You can't see it in here. Remember, this is the range that's drawn on the weekly chart. This. That's this right here. So if we go back to the daily, if we wanted to do the inefficiency on this time frame, it would start with here, there, and, and utilizing the order block. But we have what showing on that? We have a close below it. Meaning, and I take that as, okay, it might want to reprice up into what's already been delivered, which is this down close candle. And then we have what next to it right there? A wick. So inside of this wick, there's halfway, which is consequent encroachment. So I would have that level on your chart. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to spend time doing it. I'm going to get through it, but I just want to tell you where they are. You want to have that level on your chart because it might, and it could very easily reach up into that and make everybody think that the low is in place and then just use that as a reason to trade lower. I'd like to, personally, I would like to see it not trade there because the fact that it's not trading there makes it a PDRA as well because it would be treated the same way I would view like this breakaway gap up here. A PD array that's not traded to, what I am allowing for, and my algorithm allows for it to trade to it normally. If it doesn't do that, the information and the insight that it gives is that means that I am absolutely bearish. That means that the market's really bearish if it can't trade up into consequent encroachment that wick. But if it does, it would need to do what? It would need to completely smash the shit out of it and keep it from going any higher. Because if this gives up the ghost, think about what we have. We have mean threshold of this down close candle, which I'll, I'll do it here for the sake of completion. We have half of that range, which is 4343.75. Then we have the range of that inefficiency on the weekly chart, or not a weekly chart, on, the, on here. You want precision. These are the things you got to do, folks. This is too much. This is complication. Okay. <laughs> Trade with mediocrity. Then you have mean threshold here. So right away, we have an agreement that there's two PD arrays saying that this is reasonable to trade to. But can it go beyond that? And just like a, a mohawk or, or stab up there and still remain bearish? What would we have to contend with? It would be this. Not that. <laughs> it's this. 
Why do I keep grabbing that? Good grief. I should tell you, if you would have just paid attention, you were grabbing the wrong thing. I know. Armchair quarterbacks. So 4351.75. Okay, so in my mind, it's perfectly acceptable. It's permissible. It's reasonable. It would not change the bearish tone that the market has. It can trade that much higher today, tomorrow, Friday, into next week, and still be bearish for me. Now, if we get a daily close above that 43.51 and a three quarters, that's problematic. Because why? That's three PD arrays that it's now gone through. Oh, light bulbs are coming on, aren't they? <laughs> but this is not even a weekly chart. So if you would have did this, there's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. But you can't just simply just use that when you have a real um, volume imbalance down here. There's there's a, a link between this candle and this candle only by the basis of its wick. See that? This little wick here. So you have to you have to encapsulate that too, just like I mentioned on the weekly chart. So if there's ever a gap or an inefficiency like a, uh, a volume imbalance within a buy side or sell side imbalance or fair value gap, you have to incorporate the entirety of that because it's going to be meaningful. It's going to be impactful. As you can see, it's even went a little bit outside that there. And then this order block here, you can use the last down close up. I'm sorry, the last down close candle prior to it moving higher. That is the change in the state of delivery that candles opening price. So you can incorporate that as well. 